Hey everybody, round three of Blackstone Fortress. We have a threat level of one, so spindle drones are angry. We've got um, only one spindle drone on the board, which is great, but we're at a new round. Uh, and of course, at the end of the last round, I forgot to do the event roll again, so I need to do an event roll on the Blackstone Fortress, uh, the Blackstone die, which is a seven. It's pretty close to what I rolled last time, and I don't remember if that was good or bad. 7. Changing Conditions. Draw an Encounter card. If the card has a twist, it applies for the rest of the combat. If not, there is no effect. An Encounter card. Alright. There's an encounter card, and if it has a twist, it does not have a twist. I see no twist on this encounter card, so there's no effect. Um, that's great. I love no effect. <laughs> no effect is better, usually, than an effect in Blackstone Fortress. Okay, so new round which means that I need to create the initiative deck again. And I, I believe, if I'm understanding things correctly, I, I believe the, encount the initiative deck doesn't change. Like, just because I've killed all the ghouls, I don't believe that means that I get to, like, just ignore the ghouls, because they can always get reinforcements. Or they, they roll for reinforcements anyway. Okay, so I feel like that's a shuffle, right? Feels pretty shuffled. I couldn't predict the order of these cards now. I don't know what they would be. So we'll just go with that. That's our initiative deck now. So I'm going to just look to see if there are any gambits that need to happen. Okay, Janus is at the very end, and I think I'm, I'm starting to feel like that's not working out for me very, very well. So he is a strategist, according to his uh, character card. And so according to that, in the first turn of combat, he can perform a gambit for free. So I'm just going to try that. It's free to try. So he'll roll a d8 for his agility, and he got one success, which means that he can go f forward one in... Uh, initiative. So he's going to swap. He's going to slip right in front of the, the 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 baddies there, the hostile group there. Now I, I I almost feel like maybe getting Pious Vorn in front of the baddies would be good too. And then maybe we can just make make a getaway. Get out of this combat. But first, we need to roll all of the, the, the activation dice. Okay, so this is the destiny dice. I ignore any doubles, so that's a 5 and a 5 get ignored, get discarded. Uh, and then 1, 3, 6. That's good. Um, I mean, honestly, that 1 could, could get Pius into a maglev chamber, so maybe she doesn't need to waste something on activation. So that's that. And then I'll do Janus Drake's activation. One, two, two, six. I feel like that's all right. Taddeus the Purifier. One, two, four, six. That six is great for Taddeus. He can use sixes to heal himself and friend in the same hex. So if I get him up to her hex, I could get him to heal Amelin, which would be great. This is for Pius. Four, three, four, four, six. For Pius, that's really good. And now poor Amelin, she has two critical wounds and a normal wound, so she only has one slot for her activation die. That's a three. That's her only option. Now she's got destiny die she can use too. 
So that could be, that could work for in her favor. I think that's everybody. So let's just get started. Taddeus the Purifier is going to uh, go first today. So that means that he's got one, two, four, and six. So I'm feeling like if he's just a little bit closer to this guy, he can do his power attack with his servo skull. Oh, he'd have to use his six for that. But he's got this six up here too, so he could use that. Either way, I think I'm going to have to get him closer. So I'm going to spend this one to get him closer. One, two. All right, so now he's two squares away from the, the spindle drone. So if he's even closer, he can use his maul, which is a d12 attack, which under the circumstances, I kind of feel like that might be the best idea. And he has to get onto Amelin's square hex anyway to heal her. So he's going to use his two to move one, two. Yeah, this is the correct action. I'm really glad I just decided to do this. And then with his six, he is going to do his rallying cry, which means that he can remove a wound from himself. He doesn't have one, but he can also remove a wound from Amelin. So she is now down to just two critical wounds, just two critical or grievous wounds, whatever they're called. And now he's got this four left over. Might as well use it to attack, right? So that's a, that's his power maul, one hex away from his enemy. That's a d12. Let's pray to the emperor that he gets a critical hit. Emperor protect. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't quite get a critical, but he did get, he did score a wound at least. So that's good. And I happen to know that an ally is next, but now I'm thinking let's just maybe just, let's use a destiny die to do another of the same. Let's just do another attack. No, that was a wasted destiny die. Shall I continue to gamble? What does the spindle drone have? Two wounds or three? Two. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna spend another destiny die. Oh, another wasted one. <laughs> but surely, surely the Emperor wouldn't forsake us for this one last time, right? Nah, that's too much of a risk. Okay, Taddeus, you've done well, but not, not that well. Okay, next up is Amelin. Okay, great. That's a good thing. Because Amelin has some some tricks up her sleeve as well. She's got that power blade that she can use when one hex away. And she can activate that power blade with just a one or higher. She's got a three activation die that she can just spend. She gets to spend, or she gets to roll 2d8 to do this attack. She gets one success. Oops, one, one success. He only needed two to get killed, so he is now dead, which is huge. I mean, that's such a, such a great, great thing. So he's dead. She gets to roll a black stone dice to see if she's inspired by that death. She needs a one or a two, but she rolled a s seven. Yeah, so she's not inspired. Nobody's inspired by this combat, apparently. Okay, so that's her, that's her turn. Kind of feel like she should get closer to this maglev chamber, but spending, I don't know, spending a six on it is probably actually okay because there's no bad guys right now on the board. And I think by the time the bad guys come around, we've only got like one more player. Actually, you know what? I don't have to, I, I, I'm, I'm allowed to look at this deck. I forgot. So next is Janus and then the ghouls, and then Pius, and then the hostile group. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we better save this six, because if those bad guys come back, it could be bad. So we'll just, yeah, we'll progress to the next initiative. Janus. So here's Janus. He's got, um, he's got movement, pretty much, is what he's got. I don't, I don't know what else he could do. Uh, so he's got 
1 and 2 and 2. So let's use the 1 for 1, 2, and then the 2 for a 1. So he's now adjacent to a portal, and he can use a 4 or greater die, which would be a 6 in this case, and I guess he just wastes his 2 uh, to summon the maglev chamber. So I'm just going to steal the existing maglev escape chamber and move it there to, his, to, to an adjacent space. I'll just put it here for, for convenience. And then he'll use his last two, which I said was wasted, but actually he does need to move into the chamber. So now he moves into the chamber. He's ready to go. And, and really, yeah, it's... We'll just remember that they have to get to this square, essentially. I'll put the portal there. Okay, so that's where everyone needs to get to now, to escape. So that's Janus's turn. He is done. And now where the hostiles go. That could be where it gets scary. Although, you know, if they spawn at this point, it'll be way down here. Way down here. So, we'll, it might not be that bad. 17, they don't spawn. 1, 2, 3, 4, I think, or maybe just 3 is the spawning number. So, there are no more ghouls. No more reinforcements. At least this initiative round. Next up is Pius. Vorn, she's got lots of really good dice that she's not really going to be using for anything but movement. So three, one, two, three, four, one, two. So she's in the maglev chamber. So that's Pius's turn, and now I could just, I think. You know, I don't know if I can use this out of turn. It was my intent that I would use this to get someone else closer. But now I'm not sure if that's possible. I think you have to use it probably during your activation. So that might have been a wasted six. That's a beautiful thing to think about. So there's a one, a hostile group one, which is this group here. That could be really bad. If they spawn, they do not spawn. So that's 10. Uh, they don't spawn. So that is that round. Let's just see if we can get through this this insp uh, th this initiative phase. Let's let's do one more initiative phase really quick. Oh wait, there's an event. An event roll needs to happen. 3. That doesn't seem good. Unfulfilled destiny. Do not make a destiny roll at the start of the next turn. Okay, that's not bad. That's that's fine. So I'm just not even shuffling at this point, am I? That's not a shuffle. There we go. Um, do that, and then that. Okay, so this is shuffled. The first one is Amelin, and then Janus, and then Taddeus. Okay, so that's perfect. I don't need to do any gambits. Amelin. She has two activation dice. It's a five and a six. And her movement is three, so she should be able to get back. One, two, three. One, two, three. She doesn't get. <laughs> she doesn't get all the way there. Wow. Oh, that's so annoying. That's just horrible. Okay. All right. It's okay. It's all right. Um. Next up is Janus. He's in the maglev chamber, so there's really nothing for him to do. And now Taddeus. Now he's got four activation dice. So one, two, four, and six. And he only moves two, so we'll see how far he gets. So one and two, that takes him four hexes. One, two, three, four. And then I guess the four. One, two. Now she's grievously wounded, so his rallying cry won't do anything. So he may as well just spend that six to hop into the maglev chamber. So the only person left out in the open is the person with two grievous wounds. Perfect. And because there's no destiny die, she can't just 
slide into the maglev chamber. So two. So do they have reinforcements on the way? Four. I think that's still a no. Let's look on the back of the cheat sheet here. No. Four does not bring reinforcements. That's nice. This would be Pius. Uh, she's already in the maglev chamber, so this is group one. Do they get reinforcements? S uh, nine. Nine. So no. No reinforcements. Okay. So now we'll do another event roll. Ten. Event roll ten is... Um, changing conditions. Draw an encounter card, and if there's a twist, then it applies. This encounter card doesn't have a twist, so no, does not apply. There is no change to our condition. Okay, so I'm just trying to get us out of <laughs> this combat. So let's do one more turn. One more turn, just the one. Okay. Uh, Amelin. Oh, how lucky. So again, she only has two activation die. There they are, so she'll spend one to go... Oh, that's all she needed, so one, two. Okay, cool. So all the explorers are now in the maglev chamber, so they take off in their magnetic elevator back to precipice. Or back to... No, deeper, somewhere else into the Blackstone Fortress. That's, that's what they do. So the combat is over. And uh, next round, we'll choose the next exploration card. Thanks for watching.